Hi, so we have this problem of a rotor ride. And it says, in a rotor ride at a carnival, people pay money to be rotated in a vertically, vertical cylindrically walled room. So the question is, if the room radius is 5.2 meters and the rotational frequency is 0.5 revolutions per second when the floor drops out, what is the minimum coefficient of coefficient of static friction so that the people will not slip down? Okay. Well, this is a little diagram that I drew, and uh, let's just look at um this part right here with this man right here. So if we enlarge this part, it's gonna look like the wall. It's gonna it's gonna look like there's a wall. That's the wall, and the the person I'm gonna represent it by a square would look like this, right? And what are the forces acting on here? Well, first we have this normal force coming from the wall because the person is pressing against the wall, so that would be force of force of normal, and we have our weight, our weight. And that turns out to be mg. And also, we have our static friction, um, which goes upward. So friction of s is equal to mu of s times force of normalness. Uh, the normal force. OK. All right, so so we know that because this is spinning, um, we know that this this friction, uh, this normal force is acting as a centripetal force. So what we can do here now is we can say that uh, the normal force is equal to m v squared over r. And since since m v squared over r is equal to the normal force, we can plug this into this equation. Because we're trying to get the we're trying to get this M of M of S. So we're gonna we're gonna get if we do that we're gonna get force of friction is equal to mu of S times times and I'm just plugging this in. So I'm just gonna take this and then just plug it into this part right here. So mv squared over r. Okay. All right. Now, now if you look at this, the this the force of friction must equal to the mg because this is not moving. So the these forces upwards and the downward force has to cancel out. So we're going to say that force of friction is equal to mg. So since since uh, force of friction is mg, we're going to substitute that in with mg. So this is going to be mg. All right. So what do you know? The m's cancel out, and <coughs> and we're left with we're left with these three values. So let's uh let's isolate mu mu of s. So we multiply each side by by the reciprocal, so v squared. I'm just going to use this color, v squared over r, and if we if we multiply this side by r, or I mean r over v squared, r over v squared, this cancels out, this cancels out, so we we're left with we're left with me. Uh, yeah, I temporarily forgot how to draw mu, so mu is equal to r times g over velocity okay well what is the velocity well let me let me let me give me get me more space well we have our t i mean t is a uh, our um we're going to say t is t is going to be our our period Period, no, not period. Period. So that's that's rotational frequency. So that's 0.5 uh, revolutions per second. So, so if you convert this to second, 
how many how many revolutions does it con does it do in a second? Well, it's just uh, since since point it's point five revolutions per second, it would be one revolution per two seconds. So the period would be two. Okay. And we know that v from our other equations v is equal to um, two pi r over the period and since our period is t we can plug that into there so our v is equal to our v is equal to two pi r over two so it's just going to be pi r because if you plug two into here the twos cancel out and we're just left with pi r so we're gonna we're gonna uh, since v is equal to v we're gonna put pi r into here okay so Let's see what we get if we do that. So, so mu of s is equal to r g over what's pi squared and r squared? It's pi squared and r squared. Pi squared times r squared, and one of the r's cancel out. So we're just so the, our final answer. Um, let, let me move this over here too, so you can you can kind of see see what I'm doing here. So R's cancel out. Let me use this color. So R's cancel out with one of these. So this just becomes 1, R to the first power. So it goes away. It goes away. And this R goes away. So it's the static friction is just G over pi squared over R. So let's, uh, let's calculate that. So G is 9.8 divided by pi squared, where's my pi? pi squared times r. What is our r? It says r is 5.2 meters and your yours is going to be different. So just, okay, so 5 point, for me it's 5.2, so 5.2 squared because it's, wait, no, just kidding, not squared, just 5.2 because it's g over pi squared times r. Well, actually, since both of these are on the bottom and they're they're both div dividing by, or they're both g divided by pi squared and 5.2. If you get what I'm saying, um, they're in the, in the denominator. Y you have to you have to div you have to divide by 5.2 too. So so that's that's like saying saying same thing as 9.8 divided by the quantity of pi squared times 5.2. You can do that too, and you would get the same answer. So that that's what I got for my um, for my coefficient of static friction, and I am going to verify with the web assign, and the web assign says it's correct. Yay! Okay, so next, people describe this ride by saying that they are they were being pressed against the wall. Is this true? Is there really an outward force pressing them? against the wall. Well, let's look at our free body diagram. So is there any force that's going in in this direction? Well, no, because there's only weight, force of friction, static friction, and normal force that's acting this way. So so this is, so this is, no, with the big N-O, and a capital, and a exclamation point. And I hope you understood it a little bit better.